Right, so I said that I'd start doing some gas videos. So this is the first one, and before we do any installation, and what's one of the first things you're gonna learn it, uh, when you go to college and when you're in your training center doing your ACS, is tightness testing. So today's video, we're gonna be doing tightness testing. So, Alan, now that I'm officially your apprentice, what do we need when we're doing our testing? So, a manometer, or U gauge, as we say, Lake detector spray. We need a U gauge jars. <laughs> that looks about right size. <laughs> that one. Very good. So, what else is there to know? So, leak detection spray, screwdriver. Or we need a screwdriver as well. What for? For undoing the test nipple. We're playing with nipples. Oh, you can get one of them them funny ones. The ten mil. Nut driver. Is it ten mil? Yeah, I think it is. Ten mil. So, leak detection fluid. In college, it keeps getting called LDF. LDF. Yeah. LDF. So the acronyms and stuff, that's some of the thing that I'm struggling with. So we're going to keep using them and then we'll put what they are on the screen as well. One thing to point out as well is we would be using leak detector um, sp uh, spray or um, what's it, liquid. Yeah. We wouldn't be using like washing up liquid. We can't use washing up liquid because it can corrode the pipe work. So everything has to be uh, two manufacturers instructions. Yeah. So we've got two meters today, I'm gonna to be using my meter. Uh, with this one, you've got to make sure that you get the right fluid to put inside of it. And for on camera as well, because it's blue fluid, it's gonna be easier for you to see what's going on as well. Let's do it. Right, so first thing we need to do is level the U gauge. So what do we need to do? We need to put fluid in there up to the zero line. So just to zero it, and then we move that up and down. These can be a little bit faffy, so a good idea would be, if you've got your hose, put a little bit in your hose, like that. And then other people might comment and say, oh, you do not do it like that. But one thing you learn is once you've got your water in this, you don't let it come out again because it's a pain it bump to get it right. It out. This is why when you do this, you try not to. So you can see there now we've got miles too much in. Yep. So you can try and adjust that, and then we've just got a little bit too much in. But now when you try, you've got to be really careful not to let too much out. And then you can see there now I've let a little bit too much out. I don't know if you can see that with light but we can adjust it on there. And you want it to be zero on there, on both sides. So on this one here, it comes with the fluid already set and I've just brought it brand new. But if I do want to set the zero and zero out, all I have to do is adjust here. And this will put less or more space in here to make sure that the viscous line here, what's the viscous line? It's the bit that dips down and that's on both meters lines up with a zero things to remember if you're going to do a tightness test is you need to check the appliances so go turn any boilers off or lift up any cook hoods anything like that because you need to make sure that you're testing the full system when you're doing your tightness test so we've got our meter key let's have a look so first thing we need to do is we need to identify what type of meter it is now on this one if you actually have a look it's the first two uh, letters and numbers so we know that this is an e6 meter but if you look in any of your gas books when you're at college you can see as well by the shape as well what type of meter it is so let's go over some of the different things on the meter i think we start from the incoming so on the incoming so this is your incoming gas pipe this is your set this is your service valve it might look like a lever valve to you, but this is called an ECV. So emergency, emergency control valve. Control valve. Yep. So this sticker has to be on and it must show to the customer. And that's what it's for. It's for the customer where is on and what the position for off is. Yeah. Now it must fall to off. Why is that, Mr. Hart? Because if it fell on, then it could just come on, couldn't it, easily? So if you lent on it, then yeah. it would just turn so, on. So for instance, you could knock it and you could knock, you can knock it off. Knocking it off is fine. That's safe knocking it off. You made the house safe. But if you knocked it on 
say for instance we're an open end or something like that then you're making it you're filling unsafe, the room with you? gas yeah so you'd always have it so it falls to the off position this could fall under its own weight if this was loose enough inside right okay so this piece here is called an anaconda yeah which is named after well a snake really <laughs> i was gonna say something really dirty then but i'll refrain from being dirty in gas videos then we've got our regulator which by the name in the dictionary def definition which i'll put on screen it regulates so it only allows so much gas in and it makes sure that the it continues that same amount of gas is flowing through at all times and old school we would call this a governor that's what we used to call them so then we come on to our actual meter which we've identified as an e6 meter and then on the meter we're looking for the bleed nipple so that's the bleed test not, nipple test nipple test there nipple we go, test nipple so for, with the test nipple you can either use a 10 mil nut or a flat headed screwdriver which we've got for today and we do need to be careful not to over tighten them because we don't want it to snap and then also we're looking for any earth bonding now it's actually on the inside of the property on this meter and what else are we looking at on the meter uh we don't know phone number phone number so if the customer's got a problem if they can smell gas they can call that number which is 0800 111 999 it's also got some identification numbers on here. Also, what about this? That there? It's putty. What's that called? I ain't got a clue. I've not seen that yet. <laughs> so that <laughs> flu joint, it can be flu jointing compound. There's different things people call it. I won't, I won't say what they used to call it in old, old days. Well, but um, <laughs> if anybody knows what they used to call it, put a comment below, let us know. That'll be actually funny for comments. But all that's doing is it's stopping, if there were gas in here, yeah. it's stopping gas going into the cavity. There we go. Professor Plum, why do we need to do a tightness test? Well, we need to make sure that there's no gas escaping inside of the property and that it's within the parameters and the customer can definitely not smell gas. And what are we looking for? We are looking for any drop here. Now this is in millibar, so we're gonna be increasing the pressure You'll see in a second, this will go up and then we're looking for any drops. So we're just making sure that there's no gas leaking and this is what we're using to test it. First thing we need to do is make sure that the meter, the not meter, manometer, the manometer is nice and level. So it's all nice and level and it's all nice and straight. And we've got no kinks on this hose. Now we need to turn off the gas because we don't want to leave it on. Turn off the gas. We're going to undo the test nipple and then we're gonna put the hose straight on. And one thing to point out as well, we'd always be checking this hose. So if you do find that you've got a gas leak, a top tip is the first thing to do is check your equipment. It can be a little bit tricky then, but I'll just give you a little tip here, what I do. So if you just get your hose to the side there, and you start to put it on a little bit there, and then as you put it on, just click it over, and then it'll just go on then, it's nice and easy like that. What we're doing now then, Professor Plum? So now we need to do a let boy test. So what the let boy test we're doing is gonna be between seven and 10 millibars. So we're just gonna be raising this up by letting in the gas, ever so slowly, until we get between seven and 10 millibar. Oh, oh. And we put too much in. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna release that off. Put it back up. You can get some little things that go on here, then I can't remember what they're called. And it lets you let the gas out. If anybody can remember what they're called, put it in comments below. But it just means you don't have to take the hose back off. So we've got up between seven and ten stop. There we go. Where are we? Eight. About eight. We're on eight millibar. So now one minute. Why are we doing a let by test? So we're looking to see whether or not this is letting by. Yeah. So we're actually looking at the ECV. Yeah. Emergency control button. Make sure that's making not sure that this is not passing. Yeah. So that's our main concern at the minute, just making sure this is not passing. If it were passing, so if you've seen that this were going up now, what would what would you do? How would you test that? 
So what you could do is just remove this nut here on top of the ECV. Yeah. If you spray leak detection fluid inside of there, you can then see it bubbling and see whether or not that's passing. You could, yeah. And what if this started drop, full drop? What, what then would you think straight so away? So immediately we know that there's something wrong, so we need to go inside. Best bet, I'd say, is turn off all of the appliances and we'll just test the pipe work. So if we've already if we've already gone in with open cooker rods and stuff like that, then it could be that somebody's left something open somewhere. There could yep. be a gas fire open that, 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 that it's just full gas coming out. So we'd just be checking for all like that. Right, so it's been a minute. We've seen absolutely no drop. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be raising this up to 20 millibar so we can do a temperature stabilisation test. So it's between 20 and 21. Why do we do temperature stabilisation? So the incoming gas could be slightly colder than room temperature. So we're actually, when gas uh, heats up or even when it cools down, it's gonna change pressure. So you could see a drop or a spike depending on whether or not it's getting warmer or cooler as it coming. Oh, we've got a light on now because it's getting dark. Look, it's been a minute on my imaginary watch. We've not got any drop whatsoever. So we haven't got to top it up. We haven't got to release anything. So another two minutes. If it had moved slightly, then you can just open that and then you could just top it up slightly if you needed to. And then as you say, we've and got it, two minutes now to do the test. Winter time. So your full test is how long? Two minutes. So the test for the tightness is two minutes. Your full test from start to finish is four minutes. So you've got a minute for? Minute for um, let by, minute for temperature stabilization, two minutes for your test. And what drop are we allowed? We'll have to refer to the book. That's a good answer. So it's been two minutes on my imaginary watch and everything is held. It's all exactly where it needs to be. So we're done. So we're just going to put the bleed, the keep saying bleed, test nipple back in. And so what, we've, what have we got to do with that test nipple? We've got to be what? We've got to be really careful not to over tighten it. We've got to be careful not to over-tighten it because they can and do split where they go in. Turn the gas back on because we're all done here now. We've finished our test. Let's take that out. I'm going to get some leak detector fluid, LDF. I'm going to spray the test nipple. And we're also going to spray in there. And we might spray the anaconda as well, eh? Especially if we've taken it off or messed about with it, I suppose. Yeah, so what you can get, when we've done the tightness test, we've tested this now. We've tested it at 20 millibar. In this pipe work now, that could be actually up to 75. Is it 75 it, it says yeah, on there? Yeah, it says 75 on the So yeah. now this is quite, this is a bit higher. Yeah. So potentially, probably unlikely, but this could leak yeah. now because it's now under more pressure than it was before when we did the test. So it is good practice just to spray that. When we've sprayed all these things as well, it'd be good practice just to wipe it all off as well. So we're not leaving it all wet on there. What do you use, your sleeve? 